that solo is, it was one of my favorite solos of all time. And man, I think I was 12 years old and my guitar teacher, Steve Mays, showed it, played it for me and he was over the moon about it and so was I. And I, I probably couldn't play it back then and it's, it's demanding right now. I don't know if you guys spend much time playing in the key of F minor, but if you're stretching strings in the key of F minor, the frets are at their widest and the tension is at its greatest. I mean, it's so much easier to play up here in like D minor or F minor or the octave up. But down here, man, you really got it. You got to bear down. You got to have strength to do this. Man, I went on a deep purple deep dive. And the more I went into it, I have a whole different perspective. Certainly when I was 12 years old, I loved this band. I mean, I loved In Rock. And then when Machine Head came out, it was like they had gone to a new level. I mean, it was just this, particularly this song, this superb blues performance and the tone. I just couldn't believe it. And then after that, they became something different. And, and as I researched the band over the last few days, now I have a whole different perspective. You know, when you're naive and you're young and you see this amazing band, you think, oh, they must be having the times of their lives. But you guys probably know this. They actually they broke up right after that and smoke on the water was on machine head and that was their biggest hit and they became in 1973 they were the biggest album seller in america they were the biggest selling band artist in america ian gillen quit they fired roger glover <laughs> i think ian pace, pace quit for a little while and richie blackmore you may know this you may not but he secretly or not secretly he wanted to start a band with Phil Lynott from Thin Lizzy. They, you know, they, they didn't want to play together anymore and they were the biggest band in the world. And what happened was they went to Japan. They, they were obligated to tour. They were still touring. and Everybody was just, you know, going to quit at different times. They were in Japan. They got asked to do Made in Japan. They said, well, we don't want to do this, but if you, we were only release it in Japan and we can choose not to release it and we have total control, we'll do it as long as Martin Birch records it for us. But the record turned out so good, they released it and live in Japan, made in Japan, was so huge that it actually brought Machine Head along with it and they became even bigger. And so they were forced with a decision. I mean, John Lord was kind of the, the most adult person in the band from my point of view at this, this moment in time. <laughs> and Roger Glover was an adult too, but he, the, for some reason, Richie Blackmore didn't want him in the band, so he got fired. They chose Glenn Hughes and David Coverdale to be in the new lineup. And all of a sudden, they had two of the greatest lead singers in the world in the band. And so it was like, I've, I've been listening to the, the later iteration with Coverdale and Hughes. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and I loved Burn. I loved Stormbringer. So I, I even loved the iteration after. I think it was called Come Taste the Band. Was that the one with uh, uh, Tommy Bolin? I mean, man. So I was a super Deep Purple fan, super Blackmore fan. And for me, this was Blackmore's yeah, tour de force in a blues thing. Now, a lot of people think that Highway Star is his best solo. And I tend to agree, but that's not really my style so much. I, I like the blues stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you, check out the Phil X video where he does Highway Star. It's kind of a little faster even than Richie does it. And he totally nails it. So just check out Phil's version of that. Now, I have actually put together uh, an outro segment where I can kind of solo over kind of the band playing. So let me, let me just jump into that because, I mean, it's so fun to play over the band. And we, we have this technology with Isotope where we take out the vocal and we can, and I can kind of edit stuff to where I, I have two rounds of the band just kind of playing and I'm going to kind of play along with that. And uh, then I'll look at some questions. So check this out.
I discovered with this particular section that if I play as simple as possible the first three times around and then play my fast lick, that it was the best way to handle it. And the simpler I play, and if I play simple and I just listen to John Lord playing, it all works out the best. And, but then at a certain point, I do want to try and play a fast riff and kind of show off for a second. It's funny. I don't know if you guys are like this, but if I go... If I go... And I work that up to speed, which is the actual lick in Lazy, it's challenging. But if I do my licks... I can play fast forever, but playing his actual style, that was the challenge. So this has been a great exercise for me to actually force myself to learn those licks and play those licks, particularly down here in F minor. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the story of Machine Head. You might know it. You know, they were in Montreux, Switzerland. They were gonna record in a big casino. Frank Zappa was doing a gig. Somebody shot a flare gun. The place burned down. They had already paid for the mobile truck, Rolling Sun's mobile truck. They had already paid for their hotels. So they had to stay with the project and find another place. They finally found, about a week later, another hotel closing down for the winter. So they did it in all these hotel rooms and hallways in this hotel with the, the mobile truck outside. They did the record in three weeks and three days. The reason Brits went to Switzerland at that moment in time was because taxes were so huge in England that if they did the record in Switzerland, I think they could keep most of the profits outside the UK and kind of enjoy the money without paying. You know, there were 97% taxes in the 60s. I don't know if it was that severe in 1971 when they recorded this, but that's why they went to Switzerland. And that's why these guys recorded um, outside the UK. So today I'm using my Fractal FM9. Uh, I bought an Axe FX3 and paid for it right before the pandemic started two years ago. I've enjoyed that. They sent me this FM9 to try and I'm in love with it because it's almost as powerful as the Axe FX3 and yet it's a foot controller with nine switches. I'm gonna be featuring this a lot moving forward, partly because I like them. I generally work with companies where I know the people and they become friends. Uh, I'm, I never take a fee for showing gear, but this has a patch in it that's available. If you click the link below this video, there's a patch we created that you can have for free in case you have any product. If you have the FM3 or the FM9 or the Axe FX3, there's a free patch you can download down below this video. And it's really a cool patch. It's based on a dumbbell sound. And the, the, the actual, I kind of cranked it up a little, but if you use a pedal, I just turned down, there's a couple of tweaks that I explain that make it a really good platform for pedals. What I have here is a very clean sound and pedals in front of it. So, I mean, I've had, you know, great luck with just using my pedals in front of the Fractal. So more later on that, but I love these guys. And then the other thing, this is my favorite Floyd Rose guitar. Uh, I had to make a really lightweight one for me. It's got a compound radius neck and the action is just about this far off the frets. It's, I can just really fly on this guitar and it's got his most advanced Floyd Rose bridge. And check out the back, you can access everything in the back the plexiglass thing was my idea, but I even took the plexiglass off so that if I need to access something back here, it's all available. And then the wood, oh, and then it has a speed plate, which he's coming out with a version of this without the speed plate, but I love the speed plate because I'm not the fastest picker and it, it improves my picking habits. It just makes it so that I don't go so deep. The plate is right here and then it drops off. So if I want to go to traditional deep, deep picking, I do it right there. And then gradually, if I want to ease into the speed plate, it's right there. So this is called the Del Mar. It's on his website. I really, I really love Floyd. Another person that I know, that I like, that I work with. So generally the people that I feature, the gear that I feature is made by people that I know and I like and respect. A couple other things about Lazy and Machine Head. The research told me that he probably used an AC-30. He had a 100 watt Marshall there at the, at the recording. I would sense he used an AC-30 because the sounds are not that, they, they, they sound smaller than I would think a Marshall does. And he used the, I'm, I have it written down here, Hornby Skews treble booster, which was the desktop treble booster to drive the amp a little bit. 
he Richie never he doesn't remember which amp he used for which song but I, I'm guessing it's going to be an AC30 with the Hornby skews for lazy so and, and people so many people deep purple gets overlooked now and then but if you start looking you start researching so many musicians were influenced by Deep Purple. Eddie Van Halen was a huge Blackmore fan, and Blackmore was a huge influence on Van Halen. Joe Satriani also. Uh, and then even I saw an interview with Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers. Ian Pace was his hero. Uh, I was just super into Deep Purple, and I'm so glad that they reunited in, in a form where Ian Gillen gets to sing, and Steve Morse gets to play guitar, and I love to see these bands survive the huge breakups and the, you know, <laughs> the chaos that happens early in their careers when they're young and they basically don't know any better or, or whatever. They just can't handle the success. I love to see them reunite and go out and, and tour. It's, it's pretty satisfying. I am going to try and play simple for the first three rounds and let John Lord, just, I want to play off John Lord. It's, it's amazing. I, you know, like, like I'm in the room with him or something. I'm going to play off John, and, and then I'll save my fast riff for the third round. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck. so fun. Do I have a range master? You know, the, I have had a couple of versions of treble, treble boosters. And I, here's, here's my theory on that. I think in the 60s when treble boosters were used by a lot of our heroes, the amps really needed that extra push and uh, up in the high end. Because now I get the same thing from all the boost pedals I use. The micro amp. I'm using the XTS uh, Imperial Overdrive right now. This I have the Super Sweet. I have the Nobles at ODR1. So I think all these pedals function the same way that the treble booster functioned in the 60s. I just think it was kind of the first, you know, iteration of, of drive pedals that would smash the front end. I've talked about this before. I like the pedal that smashes the front end of the amp, but yet still sounds like the amp. So it's not distortion. It's more gain. It's more boost. And I need to get back into fuzzes. See, if you're asking me favorite fuzz. I don't use fuzzes that much. Uh, and, and I need to get back into, the, into fuzzes. I, certainly, if you're asking what my favorite fuzz is, it's the Octavia. That, that Hendrix Octavia, when you take a Strat and you use the next neck pickup, and you take any clone of an Octavia, and you dial it back to about five, and you use your fingers, it is the most compelling tone there is. It's almost like a, a ring modulator from the soul or something. It, 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 and it squawks and it's dynamic. So that, I need to get back into that. In fact, I'm going to do a video about that, about absolutely the Octavia. You gave me a great idea. Thanks so much. So if I'm playing a fast riff, it's actually easier for me to go fast going down. So here's one going up. I'll do that slow. And here we get to talk about the masterclass because the masterclass is 1500 videos and over 120 hours of lessons. And this is where you'll find all these licks. Uh, I built it up over the last like six years. I keep adding to it. And uh, there's a special on the masterclass just for this weekend, just attached to this video. So there's a, if you want to try the free trial in the masterclass, the goal of our free trial is so that you can take two weeks and if, you're, if it's not right for you, you opt out. So nobody is in the masterclass 
without knowing exactly what it is and exactly if they like it or not. And then where our customer service is really, you know, if somebody, if you forgot to cancel and paid by mistake, we refund you immediately. We, we take care of people 100%. But the masterclass is where I teach all of this lead stuff. And like I said, just for this weekend, there's a link below. There's a special on the masterclass you can take advantage of if, if you're interested. But, uh, and I think you can slow down those videos too. <laughs> Asking about the guitar, it's a Floyd Rose guitar that he makes called the Del Mar. You can find it on Floyd Rose's website. I really, it's, it's a really great guitar. Okay, guys, I want to thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, I've got to run away and, and do some stuff with the wife. Uh, so I'm going to play us out and... Oh, here's one. what level of guitar player do you need to be for the masterclass? I have a near beginner category all the way up to my highest level of playing, whatever that is. So if you are intermediate at any level, low, medium, or high, and want to play up to my level, it's perfect for you. There is a near beginner category. You should be able to play a little, a little bit. But once again, the free trial is designed so you can answer that question easily, quickly, with no obligation. I'm actually behind the scenes working on a beginner uh, guitar course, and it's really, I'm really enjoying it. So that will be coming. So a any of you who are beginners, uh, I will soon have a beginner curriculum for you guys. So anyway, I'm going to play us out uh, one more time through this, this three-cycle solo, and I want to thank you all very much. It's so generous of all of you to support the channel and, and, and come watch these videos. It's... Uh, it's exciting. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>